Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you on the, our community Zoom nine o'clock service. I just have a couple of notices that, that I'm aware of, but all the notices, as usual, are on all the different uh, mm -hmm. web pages and various things, which I think by now everybody's used to. But two new notices on the 3rd of July, which is a Saturday, 10 o'clock while one, we're actually having a quiet morning, which is going to be based in the key centre and hopefully in the garden. So that's a quiet morning on the 3rd of July. And then on the 17th of July, <clears throat> I understand it's 10 years since the creation of Christchurch Garden. So we're, we're just inviting people to come between one and three to uh, have tea, coffee and cake. That's if people are very kind to donate cakes. If not, it might be a, a custard cream biscuit. But that's on Saturday the 17th of July, between 1 and 3. And Ollie's doing something for kids, isn't it? Ollie and Fran are doing a bee trail, which is for children around the garden. So there should be something there for children to follow. And actually, it, it's really nice. I'm sure most adults will enjoy it too. So that's a quiet day on the 3rd of July and then the anniversary of the creation of the garden on the 17th. So more information about that later. And those are the only notices that I'm aware of, unless Mark knows of anything else that's imperative. Uh, no, well, just trying to think. Um, uh, end of june of course miriam's ordination is happening um yeah. i'm still waiting to hear uh, particular details about that it may it, it'll be in york minster um uh, with very limited numbers of people of course able to attend and um i'm hoping that they'll live stream it so that you know, mm. take part from afar, but I don't know. I haven't got any details about that yet, um, so I'm not sure whether that will happen or not. But uh, yeah. I'll, I'll keep everyone informed as to what's happening there. Okay, it'd be nice to see that live stream. Yeah. But she has moved in, hasn't she? Yeah. yeah she's, she's moved, moved in. in. She's uh, having a little bit of holiday and uh, and rest, and um, and uh, then um, we'll be uh, fully into Christchurch Network mode. By which time she'll need another holiday to get her head around everything. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all the notices, but shall we shall we pray together before we worship? <coughs> that verse of scripture just come to mind in quietness and confidence will be our strength. So Lord, in these moments of quiet, <clears throat> may we have confidence in you to know that that you are there and throughout every moment and every event in our lives Lord we can have confidence in you in your strength knowing that you would actually grant us strength to face each new day so Lord we thank you that you are there for us and we praise you now as we worship your holy name Jesus Amen my first defense and oh your name is my last amen it carries me when I cannot stand it reaches me when I reach the
that Jesus is, is with us always, but uh, it's good to be able to affirm that as we say this prayer together and invite him once again into our lives. And come Lord Jesus, be our guest. Stay with us throughout this and every day. Come close to us that we may come close to you. Forgive us that we may forgive one another. Renew us so that where we have failed, we may begin again. Amen. So we, uh, we're going to have our Bible reading now, and Marge is going to read that for us, and then Beth's going to reflect on God's word with us. Good morning. Uh, the reading comes from John chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Jesus changes water into wine. On the third day, a wedding took place in Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial <clears> washing, <throat> each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. 
and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who drew the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink, but you save the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cain in Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples. There they stayed for a few days. And Psalm 23 verse five, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Just changing a bit of furniture. Now, uh, as we as we continue to, to re-emerge as individuals and a, and a church from all the challenges of the pandemic, <clears throat> which is not over yet, we've been reflecting on what's gone before, which is like before COVID and, and during COVID. Uh, there'll be a BC and a DC, but soon this, there'll be an AC. Uh, and, and we've looked at where refreshing comes from. Uh, refreshing. And today the word we're looking at is rejoicing. So you've picked up, to, they, they all begin with a, the with a letter R. And I love this passage about the wedding. I love this passage about the wedding. Not just the wine. Uh, um, because Jesus, Jesus has just got his team together. And he's got this team together for what he knows is going to be world impacting change, change of perspective, a complete reversal of where, where people are going to, to bring people back to God. So their mission is utmost importance, you know, go for it. Yet straight away, they all end up being invited to a, a local wedding, which they go to. Uh, and, and it one to five minute job, you know, the, in those days, they went on for a week. And the last time I worked it out, the, the equivalent number of bottles of wine Jesus created from that, 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 those water jars was, was at least 700 of really top-notch stuff, the best they would have ever tasted. Because rejoicing with friends and family and community were always part of, of, of his plan. And Jesus was never super spiritual he met people where they were at and told things as it is. He just lived alongside people, bringing his God perspective to every aspect of ordinary life. Now, I, I'm sure now, uh, and we're still DC, aren't we? We're still during COVID. I'm sure loads of people can't wait for big parties and get togethers and having fun and rejoicing that social interaction now can eventually be resumed uh, and we stop living in a hug-free zone, which I struggle with, living in a hug-free zone. But I'm also sure that there'll be loads of people who can think of nothing worse than having a great big bash party. Oh, too many people, too much noise. And uh, they just want to be quiet and rejoice in a different way, certainly to begin with. I know I've had to practice, you have to practice going out. I remember the first time I went beyond the hedge at the end of my drive. I've practiced going out to shops and seeing people in different environments again, and it gets easier as you do it. But both are okay. Big parties, keeping it quiet, as long as you don't get stuck. Uh, and, and we've also been looking at that at Psalm 23 quite a lot recently and thinking about rejoicing remember verse 5 says 
You set a table before me in the midst of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. You set a table before me in the midst of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Um, and the my cup overflows is a description of another form of, of rejoicing, arguably the deepest form. And that's where the joy of the Lord becomes your strength, becomes my strength. The joy of the Lord becomes our strength. And you just get enveloped in the peace of God, which passes understanding. You can't work it out. You can't work it up. It's from God. And, and the key idea, I think, is, is, is that God sets this table before me, prepares this spread in the midst of my enemies. Right. So that my cup overflows, my peace overflows. Acknowledging the enemies are there, yet God provides in spite of them. And the two coexist. It, you know, being a Christian doesn't mean to say you're wafted through life and everything's wonderful. The enemies are there, yet God provides and the two coexist. That's what came to, to my head. And I was thinking, well, uh, it's easy. To, it's always easy to rejoice afterwards. I always knew it would work out. You know. It's always easy to rejoice afterwards when things are sorted and we feel safe. But it's much harder to rejoice during a troubling time, especially when it goes on and on and on in the midst of my enemies, as it were. Um, and this has been and continues to be the, the challenge for all of us, whether COVID had happened or not. That's, that's the challenge we have. How far we trust God so that we can rejoice during because 101 things happen all the time. And the key thing is, another key thing, God's people have the capacity to rejoice in the midst of whatever circumstances are. We have that capacity because it's not just me doing it. It's the Holy Spirit within me. And we need to just think what God has brought us through so far. Think how God has brought you to this moment. Just think of all the good things. They may be big things. They may be little things. Name them. Name them. Thank, thank God for each one. Thankfulness is really important part of starting to rejoice. It's the groundwork. Thankfulness is kind of groundwork for rejoicing. And remember, it's, it's God who prepares the table. He brings provision in a time of lack when things around us might be bleak or scary because we can still see the enemies according to that psalm. And if we only rejoice in good times, we're no different from most other people. And the Psalm 23 verse tells us, God always provides and provisions us and, and our enemies, inverted commas, you know, ad, which could be adverse circumstances, actual forces of evil, people antagonistic towards us. All those enemies see this, see this provision. And they wonder and they think, oh. as we as we trust God and keep going, rejoicing. In the midst of circumstances, people see. They see Jesus do supernatural things in the context of ordinary natural events, like turning water into wine at a wedding. He didn't have to do that. You know, it's not life-threatening, but he chose to bring joy to the people in the community. That's, that's brilliant. Now, we, we, we might not be happy about the challenges that we face, but we can be joyful that God faces them with us. 
and joy is a deep contentment and assurance when you, you just know you can't explain it but you know that no matter what we are loved and held in the palm of our heavenly father's hand he always provides he'll never let us run out of wine which is whatever we need at that point and he never abandons us and he gives us stuff not just so we manage to scrape by but he gives abundantly and joyfully and so we can rejoice in him he gives us wine as well whatever the equivalent of that is and as the body of christ on earth we are called to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep in other words we're called to walk through life with people giving time listening often people just want listening to going the extra mile miles with no agenda other than to love them as we are loved the more you know god loves you the more you can rest and relax in that and people can see it and this way people will see jesus in us in the reality of stuff of things now i thought well i'll look up rejoice but there's loads of references to rejoicing in the bible and i thought oh, i can't be bothered to count these <laughs> was lucky. but interestingly in the concordance which is alphabetical the word rejoice comes after the word rejected so i thought it's good we are not rejected but we're part of god's family in the community to be salt and light as we walk in loving relationship with him it's it's a joyful thing and if rejection's been there the love of god can love that better uh, and part of the way he does that is God prepares the table of provisions. He, like, he nourishes and sustains us. Not just with a, a emergency rations, but with, a, with feasting. When, when we're weary, he brings rest and strength and refreshing. Not just so we feel good, but so we can pass it on. Because joy, joy is attractive. You know, people you come across, you know, eeyores of the world and this moody and, and, uh, and they, they sort of sap you, sap you. you think, oh, Christ. Well, some people you feel better just for, for, for knowing them or, or having seen them. Joy is attractive and it's from the Lord. Now, I am not the finished article yet. Yeah, yeah. and yet I am. <laughs> And you are not God's finished article yet. And yet you are. Because we are provided with all we need for now, for today. And tomorrow we'll be provided with all we need for tomorrow. And God uses us to provide for, for people in our community with what we have now. And in so doing, we help draw them to the source to the source of refreshing and rejoicing people want to know how come you're coping with all this just think how important food has been in the lockdown you know? neighbors and friends have looked after those who couldn't get out i've had more cake brought for me <sighs> please stop you know, the free school meals in holidays became a major issue our restore team has been working throughout and, and, and more and more people have come and it, it, it continues to, to do so and to expand um, and deepen and widen with a package of resources, which, which includes not just food, but giving people time and listening to them and praying and just bringing Jesus into ordinary things. Sharing meals, celebrating together, making sure the, the, the wedding party wasn't embarrassed when they ran out of wine and giving them the best quality of wine ever. That will have been the best wine ever in the whole world. 
ordinary things in life were and are important to Jesus. He provides. He did then, he does now. And I, and I, I remember the first meal I, I shared recently with people indoors at a table. It was brilliant. Uh, wasn't it Jenny and Mount? Yeah. To, to, to be together in a house sharing a meal, it's just mega. And, and we need to appreciate the small things. It's like being on holiday. It's a time to rejoice. I, I'm looking forward to a time when we can sing and rejoice and worship God together. That will be something. I think that's something I really missed. But Jesus rejoiced in the everyday as he engaged with people. And as we re-emerge into the community, God wants us to engage with people as well. Not with a religious, uh, I must change the world and tell everyone they must be saved, Oof, sort of an agenda. Because I find that really harsh. But, but just to engage with the love and joy of God, serving in simple ways as we go along. And that will actually achieve far, far more. It's love that needs to be the key. And uh, this sounds gonna sound like an advert, no. If, have you had enough of lockdowns? Are you at the end of yourself with your life circumstances right now? You know, and to varying degrees that applies to all of us. Then maybe you need to be rejoyed. I just made up a word. Rejoyed with the joy of the Lord. Ask him for more joy. Look beyond your circumstances to who Jesus is and to what he does. See the feast that he prepared for you, right in front of you. Enemies might be around, they coexist, but look what he's prepared for you. And you'll find that your cup of joy overflows and you'll be more able to join in with others as we rejoice together in whatever form that might take, whenever it happens. And you might also find you'll be more able to rejoice in the waiting. Because waiting is not wasted time. Waiting is rejoice time. So there, there are some of the thoughts I got from, from looking at this. Let, let's just, just pray. Let's pray. I want to thank you, Father, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. When we are weak, we can rejoice in that because your strength can then come through us. Your joy in us draws people to you. And Lord God, we want to be, we want to be a people of rejoicing. So that we can bring your joy to wherever we are. Amen. Thank you, old Bev. We're going to um, worship God again. Now as we sing our next worship song.
have our collect for today. Faithful Lord, whose steadfast love never ceases and whose mercies never come to an end, grant us the grace to trust you and to receive the gift of your love new every morning. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have our presentation on giving and then Fran is going to lead us in our prayers this morning.
Father, we come to you this morning. And I just want to start with um, a verse from James 1, verse 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Heavenly Father, we just praise you that in our ever-changing world, you never change. You are the solid rock on which we stand. You're here for us each and every day, leading, guiding, providing, healing, caring. We thank you that we can trust and rely on you. Father, we just bring our world situation to you today. And we think of the leaders of the world meeting down there in Cornwall. They may not acknowledge you, but I just pray that you will guide them and lead them as they make decisions concerning the poorest countries of the world. That you would somehow just help them in what they decide about the vaccines and where to send money to, where to support extra, give them extra aid. And as they discuss the climate change today, we just pray, Creator God, that they would be generous in their provision to help restore our world to a healthy place. And we just lift up those countries today where COVID is still causing many deaths. We hear a lot about India and Brazil on the news, but there's places like Nepal and Cambodia that don't always hit the news, but there's so many problems in those places and we just lift them to you father today where people are just struggling to survive and there's not the health care that they need we just pray that they will know your goodness somehow you will shine through there and we ask that the governments the governments of these countries would make the vaccinations a priority and that the stock that they need would be made available and you would remove the fear from people about having these vaccines. And Father, we just pray for our government today here in the UK as they're making decisions about reopening things even further. We just pray that everyone will work together just to help keep COVID under control. You know the situation, Father, you know the problems and you know everyone involved. You just pray that they will just come together and work for the best of everybody. And we just pray for Christ Church today as we re-emerge. We ask for guidance as that you may lead us forward, shaping our church as you would know best, helping us to shine as a beacon of your love in this community. We pray especially today for Mark and the PCC making decisions about the future as those request for volunteers this last week, we just pray that people will be willing to serve in different ways, enabling us all to work together, building your kingdom here. And we just praise you for the work being, doing in the, being done in the cafe. We think especially of Penny and Suzanne as they lead the team, welcoming people in every day. And we just pray that the visitors there will feel a sense of your presence. And we just thank you for the Restore team. We think especially of Mark and Donna Brooks, who just put so much time in and work so tires, tirelessly. And we pray that you will protect them and lead them forwards. And we thank you for the work that Emma Miles is doing with the Restore Hope Hub. And Father, we just pray that you'll be close to Emma as she seeks to develop the work there and spending time with those who are real, in real need of your love and care. And we thank you for Fran Cooper, who's reaching out to the younger families. Pray, excuse me, that she will be guided by you as she builds up this work. And we also pray for Miriam today as she settles into life here in Bridlington. And we just pray that she'll soon feel a valued member of the family here. And we just want to lift up any of those that we know that are in special need of healing today. We just have a moment of quiet while we bring them to the Lord.
And I just want to finish with the words of Ephesians 3, verses 20 to 21. Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose and do superabundantly more than all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes or dreams, according to his power that is, that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So we continue as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So let's be prepared to share the peace together. We acknowledge that where two or three are gathered together in my name says the Lord, there am I in the midst of them. So may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Peace be with you, everybody. Peace be with you, Michael. Peace be with you. God, God bless, bless, mate. God bless. So we're going to uh, have our next worship song. All of that followed by communion. So if you haven't got your bread and your wine, the Feb only has the best wine. Now's the time. i 
So we now come to uh, share the bread and the wine together. So as we share in the breaking of bread together, Lord, send your Holy Spirit on us that we will always remember what you did for us in your sacrifice, your sacrifice of love that you made for each and every body. So at supper, sharing with his friends, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he shared it amongst them. And he said, take and eat, because this is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember my love for you all. And that love carries on today to each and every one of them. Then taking the cup of wine, he gave thanks and said, drink this all of you, for this represents my blood which I shed for you, for the forgiveness of all sin, to set us free from the things that burden us, from the baggage we don't need to carry. Jesus said, do this to remember what I did for you all. If you'd like to take your bread and share it. And then your wine or your juice and share it. So what we've shared together this morning, may it remind us again of the sacrifice that Jesus made for each and every one of us. So may the God of all grace and forgiveness, all healing and wholeness, draw us to himself, that we may be seen to be disciples, followers, of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. We're going to have our final worship song now. We uh, worship together. You are holy, holy. 
So we'll have our final prayer, which we can pray together, I think. <laughs> Stay with us, Lord, throughout this and, and every day. Kindle our hearts, hearts on the way, that, that we may recognise you in the scriptures, in the breaking of bread, and in each other. For you live and guide us forever. Amen. I don't know whether you'd realise that we tend to say that prayer most most Sundays, Christ in his living words, and in each other, his people. So what an amazing prayer. So for our final blessing, may the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service, and the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your heart, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father who loves you, the Son who died for you, and the Spirit who lives in you. May you know that blessing now and always. Amen. Amen. <laughs>